awful tired, boss. Awful tired. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Green Mile. I've been on a little bit of a stretch the last little while with books, or mainly ebooks, and I've been listening to a lot of Stephen King horror novels. And obviously the man is known for his throwaway into thriller and horror, but he also has some very well-known non-horror stories. Shawshank Redemption being a very big one, Heart of Atlantis, or in this case, The Green Mile. Now, The Green Mile isn't in my top 10 all-time best, maybe in my top 20, top 30, but I would say that the story itself is probably in my top 10. The Green Mile is one of the most quintessential late 90s movies of my generation, of my life. I can't tell you how many times I've watched this film on television. Anytime it would pop up, my mom and my brother and I would usually always watch it to the end. And this movie's three hours long, so that whole process, depending on what channel we were watching it on, would take four hours, four and a half hours probably. But there's a reason to that, and it's because that this is one of the best Stephen King-based films ever made. Now, some would say that right now the best Stephen King adapter from book to film is Mike Flanagan. In the 90s, and even a little bit into the early 2000s, most would say it's Frank Davenport. Frank Davenport, otherwise known as the guy who created The Walking Dead show and then was immediately kicked off of it, <laughs> had a fantastic run of his career in the 90s and a little bit into the 2000s. He also directed The Shawshank Redemption, which is heralded as the number one movie of all time on IMDb. The Green Mile is number 28, but it definitely deserves that number. This film follows Tom Hanks' character Paul, who is the head of E-Block, the execution wing, where he oversees the care, the facility, and the eventual execution of death row inmates. The lime green refers to the green tiling of the corridor that the prisoners have to make their final walk to Old Sparky on the day of their execution. And in a nutshell, I would almost say that The Green Mile is a very simplistic story dragged out over three hours, but that's a massive disservice to what this film is. It questions the idea of capital punishment, but it doesn't give you an answer. It just gives you good pros and good cons, but it leaves it up to you to decide just on the whole basis of it. It's not really meant to give an affirmative action or an affirmative question to whether it's right or wrong. Basically, it makes you think and discuss the whole idea of it in general, because in a place where there is nothing but death, such joy and life is found there because of John Coffey and his contributions to the Green Mile, both with people that he meets as well as the guards that he influences in this place. Everyone in this movie is huge 90s pedigree including Tom Hanks, Barry Pepper, Michael Clark Duncan, Sam Rockwell is in this too near on 20 years before he would go on win an Oscar and the cast all do a fantastic portrayal of their characters. They're simple there's nothing supernatural aside from John Coffey, but even then that's really toned down in terms of what we're used to from Stephen King. It's really based on the characters, their emotions, their feelings on the whole actions of taking care of these men who are death row inmates. They're murderers, they're criminals, but in this space they try to have a respectful relationship despite who they may be. They've already been given their sentence no need to give them any more grief, no need to give them any more stress than what they already have on their shoulders. And then they get given a man who has the ability to heal people and who also might not be there under the right circumstances. There's a massive moral complication with the entire idea of what they have to do with John Coffey. It's such a good movie. My mom would cry throughout this whole movie because of such great emotional moments. And I just showed it to my wife, who's never seen it before, and I was getting teary. Michael Clark Duncan's portrayal as John Coffey is so heartwarming and so emotionally wretching. You feel for his pain in his actions and his movements and his emotions. He, he's a very simple person. He's a simple-minded character. He has such presence, not just because of his size, but his display of emotion. 
and Tom Hanks is giving it right back, but he was just giving out bangers. He had done Saving Private Ryan the previous year, so he just killing it. And there's nothing I can say that's negative about this film. The whole presentation from the set design to the acting to the dialogue to the mannerisms to the music, which was done by Thomas Newman. It was kind of interesting hearing the opening notes of the movie and thinking, wait, I recognize this. I recognize that balance, that flow of the orchestra. And lo and behold, it's Thomas Newman. Thomas Newman is probably one of my favorite composers of all time who has never gotten the award recognition he deserves. Seriously, look at how many times he's been nominated. I enjoy this movie immensely. It is a huge part of my film going love. I can watch this movie over and over and over again from John Coffey walking into the building to the absolute disdain I have for Percy. He's one of my most hated characters in film. One of my most all-time hated because the actor just does a fantastic job of portraying this character. The emotion that you feel when you start to learn about John Coffey and then the final 40 minutes just just tears, and as well as Mr. Jenkins. This movie will make you care about a mouse. A mouse. Tom Hanks would then proceed to make you care about a volleyball the next year. But in the end, The Green Mile gets a 7 out of 7 from me. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's, it's in my top 30, if not top 20 for sure. Fantastically well done, fantastically directed. Frank Davenport does a great job at adapting the book into the film. That, actually, that is a pretty interesting topic to be had. Who has done it better? Frank Davenport hasn't touched Stephen King since The Mist, and now it's been Mike Flanagan the last little while, so I'm kind of curious because Davenport does a really good job of being respectful and keeping a lot of the elements in the film and kind of keeping it the same way, whereas Mike Flanagan has been able to turn and change things, but still be respectful to the book in a way. So that's actually an interesting conversation piece. Might have Mark on for something like that. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.